So the, the fire service that, that we were hired into was um, very inward looking. Um, cities tended to take care of themselves, to think about themselves. There was mutual aid agreements. You know, if one city got overwhelmed, you know, they would call and you would send a fire engine over or whatever they needed. But there wasn't a whole lot of formalized agreements. What what 9-11 taught us was how fast even the largest fire department in the country could be overwhelmed. We learned that we weren't real good at talking to our neighbors. We learned that our radios didn't you know, even work sometimes with the city next door. We learned that we didn't even use the same words as a fire department next door on uh, what a vehicle was called or, or what a different tactic or strategy was. Um, so real quick we learned that if this was going to happen again in our country and if this was going to keep happening and we were going to be the ones that were going to be expected to respond to it, number one, we knew we weren't going to be able to handle it on our own, especially a city of this size. And number two, we weren't very good about working with our neighbors, so we had to get better. So that was the biggest change that happened from the fire service we entered till the fire service that we had after 9-11 was we were no longer inward looking and, and caring for our own department. We were trying to figure out how we were going to work you know, in, in the state of Illinois, um, this is where kind of Mabus was born. It, it came out of a system that had been up in the suburbs of Chicago for years. Um, it stands for mutual, mutual Aid Box Alarm System, where these agreements to go help other departments, it's automatic. Um, you know, it's, it's already pre-designated. A dispatcher can just say, oh, you know, we have a fire that's overwhelming here, and automatically they know who to call. They know what radio channel to go to. They're all going to use the same words when they get there. They're going to have the same command structure and organization so everything stays organized. Um, so that was, that was one of the biggest changes right there was we realized we didn't do that good of a job of, of working with our neighbors, and we got way better at that. Um, one of the other things that changed was, you know, we had typically been – um, uh, we had typically been a response industry that was concerned with fires and EMS. Um, well, what we realized was there was a whole bunch, you know, a whole lot more problems that we had to be prepared for. Um, technical rescue, for one. Most of our cities didn't have the ability to rescue someone if a building collapsed. Um, so we had rescue teams that were forming. Um, hazmat teams had been around but hadn't been very well refined. Um, and we realized that, you know, chemical warfare and, you know, all of those things were becoming more real threats. Um, so we had to get better at responding to that. So um, in those next few years, a lot of money came our way, a lot of resources came our way, and a lot of training took place in a hurry. And to this day, those teams still exist. And they also um, not only move throughout regions, they move throughout the state. And like right now, one of those teams is actually down assisting the hurricane in Louisiana. Um, and, and a lot of that wasn't possible before 9-11. Those, those were some of the good things that came out of it.